God is not interested in coexisting with the devil. God is not interested in sharing territory with the enemy. One of them has to go. Light cannot mix with darkness, the scripture tells us that. The kingdom of God will require faith in order to manifest it. Now faith by its nature is forceful. Right now I loose everything with your name on it that is due to you to come right now in Jesus name. Be set free, be loosed, be healed in Jesus name. I pray. Also Abraham reminding you that the kingdom is in you. God bless you. Thank you for joining us on today's television broadcast uh, with me, Apostle Abraham, on the kingdom in you. Glory to God. Amen. Uh, we're dealing with the series, teaming, um, the teaching series of the Fivefold Ministry. And if you have not uh, yet received the previous broadcast, you need to go right back and just begin to look at them because we've been dealing with the issues ranging from where the Fivefold Ministry got lost how God began to restore it. Uh, we dealt with uh, what the functions of all the fivefold ministry is. We looked at all the five of them and we began to say, these are the functions of five ministries uh, as they function together. We looked at some of the disadvantages of the fivefold ministry if it's not restored. Uh, so we dealt with a lot of issues, but today we're dealing with the office of the teacher, uh, which is my favorite office. So if people ask me, how do you uh, arrange these teachings, um, these fivefold ministries, I say the office I respect the most is that of the pastor. The office I admire the most is that of the apostle. But the office that uh, I personally like the most, and that is something very dear to me, is that of the teacher. But mainly because I've written 10 books, so I understand the importance of laying the precepts of God line upon line in Jesus' name. So what is this teacher concept and why is it so important for us as the fivefold ministry? Now, we are dealing with the last segment of the fivefold ministry, which is the office of the teacher. According to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11, we say that he gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. So we've covered all five of them. And we've done that very well. So not only do we cover the functions of all of them functioning as five, but we began to tear them apart uh, in each office and began to see, okay, this is what this one is for, and this is what that one is for, and so forth, so forth. So the word teacher basically comes from that Greek word dadaskalos, and it's the Hebrew word rabbi. You remember many times uh, Jesus was referred to as rabbi, uh, so in the Greek word dedaskalos, it simply means an instructor, a tutor, or a mentor. An instructor, a tutor, or a mentor. Alright, so teachers have the unique ability given by God to lay down the lines, the precepts of God, uh, concepts of God actually, line upon line and precept upon precept. This is according to Isaiah 28 and verse 2. You know? They, in other words, teachers have that ability to make things very clear for people to understand. When things are mystified and things are uh, taken as you know, strange revelations and great mysteries, the teacher is able to break it down in such a way that it can be understood uh, by different people in a very simple way. What are the functions of the teacher? You know, what is it that God has called the teacher for? Okay. First of all, teachers are there to teach. You know, that is, that is, that is them, man. No other office has been entrusted by God to bring the word of God, to bring the scriptures to the people of God more than the teachers, all right? You know, apostles can help to determine what is true and false teaching, but ultimately it's the teacher that has the responsibility 
of bringing it to God's people. You know, if people were to ask me, out of all the fivefold offices, which one do you believe is the most necessary? Maybe I'll put it that way. Which one do I believe should function in each and every other office? Let's put it that way. They are all necessary. I say the office of the teacher. I say the office of the teacher because when someone is taught the word of God, they are able to stand on their faith. They are able to receive healing themselves. They are able to receive deliverance themselves. They are able to, to be activated in their gifts of calling because the spirit of a God is hovering over his word. This word is anointed. You know, this Bible is pregnant with revelation. It's always willing to give. It never runs out. So I love the office of the teacher in that sense. You know, teachers are the ones that give the foundation for impartation and activation. This is what we touched on them just now. When, when people begin to speak about spiritual gifts and I desire to prophesy and I desire to heal the sick and I desire to receive dreams and visions and blah, blah, blah. It is the teachers that brings the word of God. All right. For example, when we look at prophets, prophets prophesy. And we stand in amazement like, wow, how did he know that that person was born on that day? And how did he know that person's name? And, and we stand in awe at prophets. But if that is not taught to the believer to function in it, it is useless for me to watch someone move in giftings. It does not benefit me to see someone being raised of the wheelchair if no one's going to teach me how to be activated to move in. And that's the function of the teacher. The teacher will go into the word of God and begin to say, no, hold on. Jesus said, if you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. And this is how you lay hands on the sick. This is how you operate by faith. This is what, and so on, so on, so on. So this is the importance of spiritual gifts is that they have to come to a place of being taught in order to be activated. Amen. So even if gifts, your giftings and whatever giftings that you have, Let's just say you're a worshiper. God's given you an incredible uh, uh, talent for music. But if you've never understood the concept of worship as seen through the scriptures, you're just going to pass on that gift as a musical idea. So the teachers are the ones that bring that foundation in order for your gift to settle on a strong, steady teaching. Teachers are the starting point of kingdom living. All right. For example, there's a certain way the kingdom of God requires all of us to live. All right. The Bible speaks about all scripture is given by inspiration for doctrine, for reproof, and for correction. Teachers provide the necessary, the necessary instructions for righteous living, all right? It's teachers that will give you the understanding, no, hold on, fornication is wrong, adultery is wrong, lying is wrong, greed is wrong, getting drunk is wrong, and so on, so on. And they'll begin to show you from the word of God why these things are wrong. So it's the starting point of Christian living. No one can live successfully in the kingdom of God unless they are taught how to do. Even a baby that has been born has to be taught. There you will get burnt. If you go there, you will fall. If you do that, that's a sharp object. Um, and so forth, so forth, so forth. Number four, teaching is the starting point of faith. Now, Romans 10 verse 17 says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Listen to that. Faith comes by hearing and hearing, hearing and hearing, hearing and hearing. In other words, faith can only come within a person if they continuously yield themselves to the word of God. How? This is where the function of the teacher comes in. If the word of God does not give a foundation for faith, nothing else can. Because what is faith? Faith is simply believing the word of God that is preached that is going to happen for you in exactly the way it happens. Who does that? That's the office of the teacher. Teaching is the starting point of revelation. You know, this book is full of mysteries. The Bible says that the God takes pleasure in hiding things. It's his glory, but he gives glory to us for seeking them out. This book is not readily available to those that are lazy, to those that are not going to seek God's revelation. So when God has hidden the word, God expects the teachers to bring it to the people, at least to the level where it develops a hunger within you as a believer for you to go and look for the word of God, search for the word of God yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. So when, when, when the word revelation simply means a pig domain, all right, in the Greek, actually, it's a pig domain. And it simply means whatever has been hidden has now been opened. 
So in other words, if teachers don't bring forth the word of God, many people are going to perish. Many people are not going to walk in their calling. Now, teaching is the starting point of knowledge. Speaking about perishing, we remember Hosea of chapter 4, verse 6, if people are perishing. Now, if people perish because of lack of knowledge, then the flip side or the flip-flop of that is true. If people perish for lack of knowledge, then people will prosper for an abundance of knowledge. I don't know about you, but I want to prosper. I want everything God has in store for me. I want to have my table set. I want to eat everything God has in store for me. So what do I do? I climb my ears to the words of teachers. Amen. Hallelujah. For example, I love, I love preachers, man. I love people that will get you up and shouting and praising God and dancing around the room. I love that. I love preachers. On Sundays, I often preach myself and I get excited. But the teacher is the one that will establish you in the truth over a certain period of time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, um, listen, listen to what Colossians 1 verse 9 says. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of His will. How is God going to fill you with the knowledge of His will? Through teaching. Glory to God. So, teaching is not only starting point of knowledge, it's the starting point of understanding. All right? When we sit like where we're sitting now and we give and we give the word of God, if you don't understand it, and that word understand simply means it does not bring clarity to your mindset, then what we're speaking, I might as well be speaking in Chinese or speaking in a language that you don't understand. I must be able to dissect the word. I must be able to dish out the word in such a way that it can be understood by you so that you can take it home and begin to apply it, all right? Now, for example, let me look, let's look at that example in Acts chapter 8 and verse 30 and 31. Let me relate the story to you so that you understand it. In Acts chapter 8, verse 30 to 31, what is happening? A man named Philip has just been activated by the Holy Spirit, and he's going around different places, and he's preaching the gospel, right? There's an Ethiopian eunuch who, who works for the queen, who's heard this gospel message, right? But does not understand it. In other words, the spirit of the Lord wants to reveal it, but there's no teacher. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So what happens? God begins to move Philip. It, what actually God does is that he translates Philip. He moves him supernaturally from one place to another. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And when he moves him from one place to another, Philip asks, do you understand what you're reading? This man was reading something from Isaiah the prophet. He says, do you understand what you're reading? Listen to the response of this person. How can I understand, he said, unless someone explains it to me? Glory to God. Imagine how many people are out there holding Bibles, listening to teachings, but because there are no teachers to bring the word of God. They cannot bring that into reality. So he invited Philip to come up and to sit with him in Acts chapter 8. What did Philip do? Philip began to explain to him. He said, this is what it means. That man got saved there and then. He got baptized there and then. Glory to God. Because there was a teaching that was available for him to understand what Isaiah the prophet was speaking about. Amen. Teaching is the starting point of wisdom. Now, let's be honest. We all want to be wise. We all want to make decisions that will benefit us. We all regret making stupid decisions. So how do we gain wisdom? Yes, it's through the word of God. But when wisdom is given, it's given in the form of knowledge. When knowledge comes, it comes in the form of understanding. When understanding comes, then we are able to make decisions in line with what we've understood. In other words, the teacher has brought us to that place to say, hold on. It is wrong for me to jump into a bed with another woman other than my wife, not only because it is sinful, but because of the consequences thereof. That is wisdom. Amen. It is wrong for me to enter into this kind of business decision because this person is not born again and the word of God says one, two, three. So we need to understand that we begin to make wise decisions based on the word of God. You know, in Proverbs 4, and verse 7, the Bible says, in all our getting, the first thing to get 
is the wisdom. We minimize our mistakes. We choose the right paths in life because teachers begin to expound the Word of God to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, stay tuned because when I come back, I'm going to finish this teaching, wrap it up for you, and dish it out for you in Jesus' name. God is not interested in coexisting with the devil. God is not interested in sharing territory with the enemy. One of them has to go. Light cannot mix with darkness, the scriptures tell us that. The kingdom of God will require faith in order to manifest it. Now faith by its nature is forceful. Right now, I loose everything with your name on it that is due to you to come right now in Jesus' name. Be set free, be loosed, be healed in Jesus' name. I pray. Also, Abraham reminding you that the kingdom is in you. We're back, um, and we are talking about the teacher. The teacher, the ministry that I believe is so necessary in these days. We are getting so caught up in, in supernatural things and in signs and wonders and God's pouring out His Spirit and dreams and visions that if we're not careful, we can get so up in the sky that we don't forget, that we forget that it's the principles of God that begin to ground us here on earth. So we're looking at the importance of the office of the teacher and why the teacher has been selected by God in these times to bring much needed truth and clarity to whatever is going on. You know, I love the fact that when, when it's 1 Corinthians 12, I believe it's 28, uh, the teacher has been given one of the most important offices along with the apostle and prophet. It's one of the foundational offices. The Bible speaks about first apostles, then prophets, and then teachers. What is the grace on the teacher? Patience. Teachers have patience. Okay? Teachers are able to build the lives of people line upon line, precept upon precept, until the principles are understood. So it's not uncommon for a teacher to preach one thing for one year. Hallelujah. I remember a man of God named Kenneth Hagin. Uh, God had given him the revelation of you can have what you say and the power of positive confession according to the word of God. And people asked him, why do you only teach on Mark 11, 23? Why do you only teach? He says, I teach on it for as long as you don't get it. In other words, he was, had a teaching spirit that was able to stick with something for as long as it was absolutely necessary. Number two, teachers have diligence. You know, there's something about a teacher, man. They are able to go and search the scripture diligently so they can correctly divide the word. So teachers are the ones that have the grace to go and do the research, to look at the Hebrew, to look at the Greek, to look at this translation, that translation, in order to bring the word of God. Teachers also have the grace to teach. You know, not everyone can teach. Amen. I've heard many preachers out there, they get you all excited, but they can't preach. They can't teach. In other words, they can't lay that concept so simply for me that I can go and apply my life to it. Yes, I jump around. Yes, I scream and shout. Yes, faith will be developed. But when the faith and the excitement is gone, what do I have to hold on to? And that's where the teacher comes in. All right. For example, if Bible school curriculums, university curriculums, these are usually set by a teaching anointing, a teaching ministry. In the same way you get false prophets, in the same way you get false apostles, you also get false teachers. You know, teachers are the ones that teach the Word of God. Now, if anything is taught incorrectly here, it's big trouble for a lot of people. So you got a lot of false teachers as well. Let us look at some of the errors concerning the teacher. Some people say it's the least important office. I told you already that it has been listed as one of the offices of importance along with the office of the apostle and the prophet. All right, no office is less important. The office of the teacher, just because it is placed last in Ephesians 4.11, does not mean it's important. 
because the gifts of the Spirit have been put in 1 Corinthians 12 doesn't mean the one that's given last is the least important. No. Number two, it is wrong to say teachers are boring. Most people say, ah, me, I like to listen to preachers, people that get me excited. No. The reason you find teachers boring is because it's hard on the flesh. Amen. If you imagine if you were in a classroom and, and the, your science teacher began to preach the concepts of evaporation and precipitation. That wouldn't help you very much. So you would sit through a 30 minute class or one hour class and he would explain and draw on the board carefully because that will help you for your exam. So teachers are not boring, they're just hard on the flesh because we don't like paying attention to too many things for a long time. The Bible says that teachers have been graced and given that anointing by God to bring clarity to us, all right? And sometimes to see things clearly means the mist of darkness has to be removed. Remember the Bible says the entrance of the word is what gives light, amen. And the amount of light that is being revealed to you takes time before it begins to penetrate the darkness. In Jesus name. Another false teaching is that teachers can only teach. You no, know, teachers can also demonstrate all the gifts of the Spirit. Teachers can also plant churches. Teachers can also prophesy the word of the Lord. There's no restriction because each and every office as we've learned before is accessible by faith to all the other offices in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. Listen, we've come to the end of our teaching. On the teacher, praise the Lord, and I want you to reach out to Jesus right now if you've never, and just say, Jesus, save my soul, and he'll come right there and do it. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let us know what the Word is doing for you. We've got our information scrolling down at the bottom of the screen, and I just want to sign out and just pray for you as well, and believe God to release every bondage that is on you. Sicknesses be gone in Jesus' name. I hear in my spirit and see my spirit, God beginning to set free. Uh, some children, some mothers been praying God is restoring that. In Jesus' name, I break the bondages of witchcraft and demonic activity on your life. I set you free. I bring the light of the gospel to you now in Jesus' name. God is going to meet you at that place of your need and at that point where you're trusting and believing him for. Amen. As Apostle Abraham uh, signing out and reminding you the kingdom of God is in you. God is not interested in coexisting with the devil. God is not interested in sharing territory with the enemy. One of them has to go. Light cannot mix with darkness, the scripture tells us that. The kingdom of God will require faith in order to manifest it. Now faith by its nature is forceful. Right now, I loose everything with your name on it that is due to you to come right now in Jesus' name. Be set free, be loosed, be healed in Jesus' name. I pray. Apostle Abraham reminding you that the kingdom is in you.